Hello my friends and welcome. I haven't used my spot welder for a while and now it has a problem. It doesn't turn on. So let's fix it. Spoiler alert, this is the problem. I built this portable spot welder last year. You can check out the video on my channel. I haven't used it for a few months. Two weeks ago I tried to recharge it and I noticed that the lithium polymer cells are unbalanced. So I put together some connectors, an active balancer, a battery tester and tried to recharge and balance the cells without checking the battery. For the moment I managed to balance the cells, but now after two weeks the spot welder won't turn on anymore. Even the battery tester doesn't turn on and I tried two testers. Let's check the cells, 0.2 volts, 1 volt, that's nice, and nothing. The total is 1.3 volts, so this battery is unusable. Let's take a look inside, and ladies and gentlemen, behold, the most bloated battery I have ever seen. So this happens when you try to balance over discharged lithium polymer cells. This is actually dangerous, I think it's one step before explosion, I should have known better. I will desolder the connectors, because I need to modify the design to make it safer. The battery is so rounded that it comes off very easily. But why did this happen? I never had this problem with the old spot welder. Is it because after using it I was able to disconnect the battery and store it safely? Of course! In the new spot welder the battery was always connected to the spot welding module and I turn it on by pressing the front button. It looks nice, but there is a small problem. In standby mode, the module draws a tiny amount of current, which in a few months completely discharged the battery and the cells became unbalanced. And two weeks ago, when I tried to active balance the over-discharged LiPo battery, this happened. But no worries, I already bought a new battery, which is the same size, but with a bigger capacity. Actually, right now, the new battery is thinner than the old fat one. I will remove the charging connectors from the back panel. They will be mounted on the side, near the charging modules. I don't want to break the wires, so I will cover them with a piece of masking tape. Now I can drill the new holes for the charging connectors, 8mm and 12mm. Let's install the connectors and solder the wires. I will rotate the USB Type-C connector to a horizontal position before tightening the nut. Let's compare the batteries again. I have to be careful with the new one, not to repeat the same mistakes. I will install the battery in the same place, but the balance leads are shorter and do not reach the BMS connector, so I will turn the battery upside down. The battery will be fixed in position with strong sticky foam tape. I forgot to check the new battery. The voltage is a little lower due to storage and transportation, but the cells are pretty balanced. In the future I will periodically use this cable to check the battery and balance the cells if needed. LiPo batteries must be treated with respect, most importantly, don't let them over discharge. The upgrade is finished, I can close the case now. I will leave it without the back panel so I can easily connect the battery when I use it. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see these videos a few days earlier and more DIY videos, please check out my Patreon page. This is the new and improved portable spot welder. The charging connectors are on the side and in the back I can visually inspect the battery. It looks a bit weird, but it's safer this way. The next step is to charge and test the battery. I will use the 12.6 volts and 2 amps charger. And I connected the battery tester to monitor the cell voltage during the charging process. 3.9 volts, 4.0 volts, 4.1 volts, the cells are pretty balanced so far. 
When the first cell reaches 4.2 volts, the BMS board begins the balancing process. This cell continues to be charged with a lower current so that the other cells will catch up. This is passive balancing. And when one of the cells gets to about 4.25 volts, the charging process is stopped. You can see the green LED on the charger. But the passive balancing continues for this type of BMS until all the cells are discharged to 4.2 volts. Now the cells are perfectly balanced. Let's set the maximum power level on the spot welder and test it on some nickel strips. It looks pretty powerful, smoke is coming out of the chipboard panel. Yep, the chipboard is burned under the welds and the nickel strips don't separate easily, the welds are good. But the final boss is to weld the nickel strip to some 18650 cells. Let's see this in slow motion. These nickel strips have a thickness of 0.12 mm. This is the maximum that the spot welder module can handle. It looks nice, let's check the welds. The welds are strong, I cannot remove the nickel strip, it's just ripped apart. After using the spot welder for a few minutes, I want to check the battery. Yes, the cells still have a good voltage and are balanced. Now, if I don't use the spot welder for a long period of time, more than a month, I will completely disconnect the battery. And when I need it, I can connect the battery easily. It looks a bit weird with the guts sticking out from the back, but it's safer this way. If you don't want to disconnect the battery every time, you should charge it at least once a month and check if the cells are balanced. So this is my upgraded spot welder, version 2.1. It's safer and it has a more powerful battery. Remember, lithium polymer batteries are dangerous, they must be treated with respect. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it, leave a comment below and you can also check out my other mechanical nerd channel. Thanks for watching, bye!